Today we talk about how vinyl changed the world. No, not that kind of vinyl. Well, that kind of vinyl, but we're not talking about records today. We're talking about a different kind of flat vinyl. Today's asbestos artifact, vinyl tiles. Welcome to Asbestos Artifacts, where we take a look at some old asbestos products and dig a little bit into the story behind them. I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane. The year is 1901. Near the town of Beaumont, Texas, petroleum speculators drilling at Spindletop Oil Field released a massive oil gusher. At the time, it was the biggest of its kind, producing 100,000 barrels of oil per day at its peak and helping to transform the oil industry. In the ancient world, Oil of all kinds was burned and used for waterproofing, and that included petroleum, which was Latin for rock oil. It was used in the form of tar to seal boats and basket of reeds, and in some cases, so-called rock oil was burned on torches. Similarly, asbestos was known by the ancient world, and it was valued for its resistance to water and fire, but it was even harder to find, and many people had never actually seen it. Many chemists experimented with petroleum in the 1800s, looking to lubricate machines with it and to burn it for light. A lot of the best oil came from whales, and whalers were seen as the cowboys of their day, as described in Herman Melville's Moby Dick. But improved drilling methods and the discovery of new oil reserves in Texas, like at Spindletop, meant that petroleum could be further explored, refined, and developed by chemists and engineers. Exit the whalers and enter the roughnecks, along with a rapidly expanding petrochemical industry. When you ask how oil is used in our everyday lives, many people talk about transportation. Petroleum gives us fuel that runs many engines and the oil that reduces their friction. And there's no doubt that the combustion engine was greatly responsible for the use of petroleum. But there's another thing we get from oil, and it may lay as big of a claim to influencing our modern world. I'm speaking, of course, of plastic. Just one word. Plastics. Now everything from keys to computers use plastic, and it's hard to overstate how dependent the modern world currently is on plastic. Plastics were basically invented from the petroleum industry trying to figure out what to do with all of its waste products in processing crude oil and natural gas. A British company came up with a polymer of ethylene, or polyethylene, which is one of the most common types of plastic, found in everything from Tupperware to plastic bags. American company DuPont made nylon and rayon from it, helping to turn pantyhose into a global phenomenon. And then there was vinyl. Vinyl had actually first been invented decades before it was used. As with polyethylene, and many other discoveries in chemistry, the human synthesis of vinyl was an accident. Actually, two accidents. In 1872, German chemist Eugene Bowman left a flask of vinyl chloride in the sun and created a white polymer, which we now call polyvinyl chloride, or more commonly, PVC. Bowman never patented or developed a use for it, and many years later, two German chemists also tried to process the hard white PVC substance, but they too were unsuccessful. It wasn't until 50 years after Bowman first discovered PVC that an American chemist named Waldo Semen found a use for it. Semen was working for a newer company known as Goodyear, looking to make improvements on their rubber tires. In interviews, Semen has stated that no one knew how to use PVC polymers, so the company would throw them in the trash. Semen experimented with PVC until he came up with a plastic that could be made more elastic or firm, was easily molded, was waterproof, and was resistant to electricity and fire. Now, the stock market crash of 1929 temporarily sent his discovery to the back burners, but by the 1930s, he came up with the idea that would give PVC the global influence it has today. Not exactly. Closer. Waldo Semen, developer of commercial vinyl, watched his wife making curtains and realized his PVC development could be made into cloth. He had set out in search of an improvement on rubber and found vinyl. Not only did it make synthetic tires, vinyl could be made into thin material suitable for insulation against moisture and electricity, and they began manufacturing raincoats, umbrellas, shower curtains, and eventually electrical insulation. The vinyl record was introduced as early as 1920s, but it wouldn't become standard until the 1950s. Vinyl flooring was introduced at a World's Fair in the 1930s, but it also didn't become popular until much later. Why? Because the outbreak of World War II required most of the nation's vinyl to be utilized for the national defense. Vinyl was prized for its malleability and resistance to electricity, and it was used for wiring throughout vehicles and ships. Similarly, much of the nation's asbestos inventory was also redirected to the war effort. 
Asbestos, of course, was also widely used on ships. Not only didn't it dissolve or conduct electricity, its fire and heat resistance far surpassed vinyl and many other materials. Plus, it was incredibly strong and durable, with tensile strength even greater than some metals. This quality would be the reason that asbestos was so widely added to vinyl tile, and it's how we get today's artifact. After the war, vinyl techniques improved and two symbols of American suburbia unrolled throughout the hills and valleys of the United States, PVC pipe and vinyl tiles. Until then, many floors were rubber, especially in the kitchen where carpet was less desirable, but they were harder to keep clean. Linoleum was popular, but it was more expensive. Vinyl tiles offered a cost-effective solution. Because asbestos fibers had been added to the tile, the vinyl could withstand heavy foot traffic and was resistant to water and easy to maintain. Manufacturing advancements in the 1950s and 60s made vinyl flooring a staple in homes and businesses, especially since vinyl flooring was relatively simple to install compared to other flooring materials. And as with many products appealing to American tastes, vinyl could be personalized. Vinyl tile was a plastic mold, and the pattern could be made to look like wood, parquet floors, or even swinging 60s patterns and flowers. Vinyl tiles became the second most popular flooring in America. Now this floor tile was made by a company called Kentile. It is a travertine vinyl asbestos floor tile, this one in Roman red. Now because asbestos fibers were added to this vinyl, this stuff is very durable. The durability is because the fibers would go in here and reinforce to add for strength. One of the reasons that these tiles became, uh, were so affordable was because the asbestos that was put in these tiles was usually the waste fibers from other asbestos manufacturing plants, fibers that were too short to be used for other purposes. That's part of why these were so cheap. Vinyl floor tiles were relatively easy to install so weekend warriors could refresh the kitchen in a weekend. As vinyl showed up in siding, blinds, and many places in buildings, manufacturers added asbestos to increase their durability and the fire resistance of the tiles. These tiles were so durable that many of them are still in place decades after they were originally installed. So you might be wondering if those old asbestos vinyl tiles pose a health risk. Asbestos is only dangerous if you inhale it or ingest it. Asbestos fibers are blended in with the liquid vinyl, and when the product cures, the fibers are encapsulated within the tile, so they can't become airborne unless the tile is damaged or disturbed. In normal usage, the fibers are not going to be released, so there's no need to worry unless the tiles are already damaged. The risk would therefore come during the removal of these tiles. Cutting, scraping, or otherwise damaging these tiles can release fibers into the air, which absolutely is dangerous. Some of the adhesives used to install the floor tiles also contained asbestos fibers, so removing old vinyl flooring is best left to professionals who have proper protective equipment and who will take care not to release fibers into the air. There's no easy way to visually tell whether an old vinyl floor tile was reinforced with asbestos or not, so it's better to play it safe. And speaking of playing, as far as I know, asbestos was never added to vinyl records, so you can keep playing all of your favorite records.